continuing our tour of the inside of the aircraft, it's now a good idea to take a look at some of these instruments. For example, here's my fuel gauge. It tells me that I'm loaded with half of my fuel in my left auxiliary tank. I can switch to different tanks. Right main, left auxiliary, right auxiliary, left auxiliary. Notice that at this point those indicators are white. That means that the computer is automatically going to manage our fuel. And that's the normal setting. If I don't have it on white like that, now all fuel will permanently be drawn from the left main tank until it goes empty, at which point our engines will shut off. Here, all fuel will be drawn permanently from the right main tank until it's empty, at which point our engines will shut off. If I keep selecting the fuel until everything turns white, then the computer will automatically switch tanks to balance the weight, and that is a really good thing. To do that, I'm clicking a button that I've mapped to control fuel management. We'll talk about button mapping a little later. There are many other instruments. In the center, in this area, we can see instruments that are optimized toward for monitoring the um, aircraft's flight. Here's the speedometer. That tells us how fast we're going. And the altimeter tells us how high above sea level we are flying. And the rate of climb indicator tells us whether we are climbing or di diving and how fast. The speedometer is obvious. This needle just moves up to control the speed. So if I'm going 400 miles per hour, it'll be pointing right here. There is one other detail about the speedometer. It tracks your speed using two different methods. The main hand that you can see here is white, and it tells you your air speed, a measure of the pressure the air is asserting against the surfaces of your airplane proportional to your speed. There's a second hand. It's red. You don't see it now because it's hidden under that first one, but it indicates your true air speed in miles per hour over the ground. When you're at sea level, the two hands track together. But as you get higher above sea level, your true airspeed is much faster than your indicated airspeed. So the red hand will advance much faster than the white one as you climb. The altimeter is less obvious because it has uh, three different hands, kind of like a clock. This little red indicator is the most important one. It moves one digit every 10,000 feet. So at 10,000 feet, this red click, will, this red indicator will be here. At 20,000 feet, it'll be here. At 30,000 feet, it'll be here. Most aircraft can't go any higher than about 30 or 40,000 feet, so they'll top out around here unless you're in a high-performance jet. The smaller hands, or the other hands, move more rapidly. The smaller, the uh, the larger one indicates hundreds of feet, so this, it would point here at 100 feet, 200 feet, 300 feet, and go all the way around at 1,000 feet, or upon the smaller hand you can't see, it would point to the one. So by combining the red hand for ten thousands of feet, the small hand for thousands of feet, and the large hand for hundreds of feet, you can learn to read your altimeter. The rate of climb indicator right now is pointing straight at the zero, meaning we're not climbing or diving. But if I turn on the engine to start climbing, this needle will move up to maybe 1,000 feet per minute, or 2,000 feet per minute, or 3,000 feet per minute. A very powerful fighter aircraft of this type can climb at about 4,000 feet per minute. And conversely, if I point the nose down and start diving, that needle will go down for here to indicate diving at 1,000 feet per minute, etc. Those are the basic flight controls. And when we add engine controls, we'll end up with a flyable aircraft.